Our central grid system has worked in the same way for many decades. Electricity is generated from a large remote power plant and is distributed many miles through power lines to our homes, schools, and businesses. The central grid is large and has a variety of vulnerabilities. Millions of people are affected by power outages every year. Causes of these outages may be anything from severe weather, such as lightning, wind, rain, and flooding, to vehicle and construction accidents. This often leads to economic loss and a variety of safety concerns. The National Energy Technology Laboratory has entered into a memorandum of understanding with the City of Pittsburgh to help the city improve its energy infrastructure. This collaboration with the City of Pittsburgh is an example of how the National Energy Technology Laboratory strategically partners with key local and regional stakeholders to advance the mission of the laboratory. Our role at the University of Pittsburgh in the District Energy Initiative is to support the city and NETL and our community and industry partners in really realizing the development of a concept that we came up with associated with a grid of microgrids in and around the city of Pittsburgh. It's a very exciting time for the city of Pittsburgh to be part of this project when we're talking about microgrids and district energy and that all plays a part in how we choose as communities how we generate our electricity and how we use it and live our lives within those communities. And, and very basically a microgrid is typically a, a defined uh, energy network in which the consumers of that defined energy network, whether it be a college campus, an industrial park, uh, a small neighborhood or a community, or maybe even a big manufacturing facility, uh, serves its own energy usage with its own energy resources. The microgrid is comprised of the same types of equipment, cable, lines, transformers, switches, that makes up the larger grid. So a microgrid is a distinct area. The key is it has the ability to separate and reattach to the larger grid seamlessly. For the last hundred years or so, we have not participated in that process. Energy was produced far away and we just paid our electric bill. But now we have this opportunity to choose where how and with what energy source our energy is being produced. When you, when you really do look at the future, we know, we know the climate's changing, we know warming is happening, um, and there's going to be more outages, more storms, more frequent, more intense storms. And for Pittsburgh, people don't always think about that, but when you think about dependable, reliable energy sources, whether that be for the users of the site or having a place of shelter. This enables uh, one to have the benefits once these microgrids are implemented to have uh, affordability, improved reliability, uh, resiliency, and also frankly to provide an economic platform to create jobs and opportunities uh, for the city. Because this is a demonstration project, there's a lot of learning that's going to be happening. And with that learning is that uh, ability to build economic and community uh, development and workforce development in that. So here we can talk about building new jobs and the opportunity for training people in this new energy future. So what a better place to do that within the, than within those communities that we are placing these microgrids. We are very interested in using a variety of technologies within the, the Pittsburgh's microgrids. Uh, these would include microturbines, uh, fuel cells, reciprocating engines. Uh, we'd also be looking at renewable power, so this would be photovoltaic and wind. Uh, we'd be looking at various types of energy storage technologies. Uh, we'd also be looking at things like uh, demand response, perhaps. Fuel cell-based power systems can be used as a distributed power generation source, and uh, integrating a distributed power generation system into a microgrid uh, provides the security in terms of having critical load supported by this distributed power generation source during times when grid is not available. So we bring a lot of capability uh, to the microgrid area in terms of technology, talent, and an understanding and a history of, of really how to develop these kinds of solutions. We've been doing it literally in, in this region for well over a hundred years. And that extends all the way to energy development. 
in terms of the Pittsburgh region being you know, a, a very strong place for uh, fossil fuel development, the birth of, of the nuclear industry, uh, and now today looking very aggressively at the growth of renewable and other alternative energy systems. Really a place where we're, we're leading the nation in terms of clean energy development and delivery infrastructure. The district energy or microgrid concept and, and demonstration project really fits very nicely into the City of Pittsburgh's climate action plan because not only addressing the reduction of greenhouse gases, but also providing for resiliency. So when we can um, island off particular districts or neighborhoods, if there is a severe weather event or a cyber attack that shuts down part of the grid and we can separate out and island off those essential services like hospitals or uh, first responders or like I said before, maybe banks or um, grocery stores, whatever those services are deemed really important to that community, then you're providing that resiliency to uh, be, when the whole grid is down, um, those will still function and be able to offer the residents and people who work in those communities uh, the ability to continue uh, life within those neighborhoods. And that's really important if the grid were to go down for, even if we're talking a few hours to a few weeks, that, that the economy doesn't shut down during those times. The grid of microgrids concept will weave together a network of distributed energy resources from the city's North Shore to downtown Pittsburgh to Oakland and to the city's Larimer and Hazelwood neighborhoods. This network will incorporate many of the city's existing energy systems, such as the North Shore and downtown steam plants, while introducing new and advanced distributed energy generation and storage technologies. As we look to the future, uh, we are a little bit less industrialized, but we do have some legacy systems. And so we're a community that, that's also in the process of redeveloping. So as our steel industry uh, declined, you know, we began to dismantle steel mills and turn those places into greenfield developments of various kinds. The Elmano site will be both a, a demonstration, it'll be a market leader, uh, it'll be a way for I think people to sort of see how this can be done and I think it can really drive new markets for um, renewable energy sources. In doing that it's really looking at the broader vision of sustainability, going beyond really environmental sustainability to also the social and, and of course ensuring that it can be economically feasible also. But we really want it to be something that's going to push the market and create something that we believe is going to really have people look at Pittsburgh differently. There's some challenges that probably go along with this, and I think probably on the regulatory side, that may be the largest challenge that we see. So in Pennsylvania, when we talk about community solar or community shared solar or solar gardens, as we see in other states like Colorado, we don't have the ability to do that there. So in those places, you can build a solar system and multiple people might buy into that system and then they'll get credited on their electric bill. The way our regulations are written now, we can't do that now. So a project like this could create the momentum and uh, present the case why it's so necessary to change those regulations. NETL solid oxide fuel cell portfolio is about 40 projects that span from basic R&D to uh, systems demonstration. NETL is partnering with Fuel Cell Energy in this, in this very important project. Uh, we have a collaborative effort and NETL uh, helps uh, Fuel Cell Energy not only in terms of financial support but, but, but also in terms of uh, technology where some of our projects collaborate with Fuel Cell Energy in, in, in order to make this project a success. Duquesne Light has already begun looking at a, a very extensive and advanced microgrid at their Woods Run operational facility. It's a unique facility in terms of its operational capabilities. We're looking at uh, putting together a very advanced microgrid with various types of, of energy uh, resource developments on the site integrated through some novel delivery networks to the existing buildings. You might ask, why a microgrid? It goes back to reliability service to our customers. If there were to be a multi-day prolonged outage in our region, we need to have electricity serving our facilities so that we are in a position of strength 
to efficiently restore service to all of our customers. We want to have an educated workforce that understands how to construct, operate, and maintain a microgrid so that we are well informed and can help our customers who might also want to install microgrids in our territory. I think there's, you know, there's so many possibilities and with, you know, the great minds that are here in Pittsburgh around this knowledge economy that we have now, we really think that this can be a, a new ground for really looking toward the future of the possibility.